Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to Jupiter. In today's video we're going to be talking about mysteries of this beautiful planet and find out what scientists even today are not really sure about when it comes to Jupiter. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. And let's start with the number one unknown mystery about this beautiful planet, and that's, of course, what is actually inside of it. Its composition. We know that its composition doesn't seem to meet the modeling of planetary creation because it seems to have a lot more stuff that is not hydrogen and helium. In other words, Jupiter's metallicity, a concept about which I've talked about in a previous video, doesn't seem to match the models. It's, it has very high metallicity, it has a lot of stuff that is not hydrogen, not helium, and this suggests two things, or I guess at least one thing, and that's that Jupiter over time absorbed a lot of rocky materials and a lot of possible um, planetary bodies. It may have swallowed a lot of Earth-like planets or planetoids that would have created planets, and it seems to have all of this stuff inside now. So. It seems that Jupiter has several Earth-like bodies on the inside, which is very unusual and very interesting. And mystery number two is in a relation to how this beautiful planet was actually made. Now, we don't really know specifically where it was made and how it was made, and we don't really know if uh, during its creation it had a lot of effects on other planets. As a matter of fact, one of the previous videos I made was about a paper that suggested that Jupiter at some point kicked out another gas giant from our solar system, and that we used to have five gas giants, not four. And this, uh, all, all of this basically gives you an idea that we don't really know much about the creation of Jupiter and we don't really know exactly how it formed. We have ideas, but none of them have actually been proven yet. But the two most prominent ideas right now um, basically tell us that this massive uh, planet was either formed farther away from the sun, then migrated inward and changed a lot of orbits of other planets in, in its path, or it may have been actually formed where it is today, and then uh, a lot of objects were sort of dragged toward it and it absorbed them as they came close. So maybe one day we'll find out, but definitely not today. Now right now we're flying through Jupiter's rings, which you may have known that Jupiter does have, um, so we do know that Jupiter does have rings like all of the other ice and gas giants in our solar system. But what you may have not known is that Jupiter also has a lot of water. As a matter of fact, this is the most massive water body in our solar system. It has more water than any other planet, any other object out there. At least in our solar system. Now, we don't really know where this water came from and how it ended up inside of this uh, beautiful planet. But if we uh, one day learn how the water came here, it may help us understand how water on Earth appeared as well, because we don't even know where our water came from. We thought it was from comets, but then we measured water in one of the comets and find out, found out that the water there was completely different. So maybe it is not from comets at all. So we know that water is here and it came from somewhere, and we know that understanding where water came from will help us understand um, how life was formed on our planet, and, of course, how life might actually form on other planets out there in other solar systems. So figuring out where Jupiter got its water is kind of important. And interestingly, in 1994, there was actually a comet that collided with Jupiter by the name of um, Shoemaker Le Levi 9. This comet um, created a huge water cloud in the upper atmosphere of Jupiter, and you can still even detect that cloud there today. So water seems to not only arrive to Jupiter, but also seems to stick around for a very long time. So there's quite a lot of mysteries related to water in this particular planetary system. Now, mystery number four is all about this beautiful giant red spot that is very, very familiar to us because this is essentially how most people can tell Jupiter apart right away. Now, what is the mystery here? Well, there's actually quite a lot. For one, we don't really know how deep it goes and what's underneath of it. And two is that we don't really know how it formed 
and why it's been shrinking. In 1930, um, in 1930s at least, um, we know that the size of this thing was about three times bigger. Today, you can barely fit Earth inside. Back then, you could actually fit three Earths. So the size of this thing has changed dramatically. But why? We don't really know. And we don't even know what, what's powering it. Why has it lasted for like hundreds of years? What's happening here? What is this thing? And we know that other gas giants and ice giants have them. So what makes them the way they are? Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about the hydrogen inside this planet. 90% of mass here is essentially hydrogen. But as you go deeper and deeper into the planet, we think that this hydrogen uh, loses its electrons and becomes metallic. It becomes very similar to metals on Earth and basically starts conducting electricity. We think that basically because of that, this planet has a very powerful magnetic field. As a matter of fact, it has the most powerful planetary magnetic field in our solar system. But what is going on with this hydrogen inside and how exactly it forms all of this and essentially how this magnetic field is formed is a huge mystery. We know or we think we know how magnetic field on Earth is formed, but how it, cre how it is created in this particular planet is totally not really understood at all and is all based on hypotheses and ideas that are not particularly proven yet. And the thing is, understanding how magnetic field is formed on Jupiter is very important because we need to have magnetic field to survive. And so if, we, if we're going to be exploring other planets, we need to be able to predict if they have magnetic fields. So how it's formed and whether other planets in other solar systems have magnetic field is very, very, very essential. So that's essentially mystery number five. And mystery number six actually relates to magnetic field. And specifically, it relates to something I'm about to show you that's right here on one of the poles of Jupiter. Jupiter, like many other gas giants, has aurora. Aurora are these beautiful lights that you see that are formed right here, and I can maybe make them a little bit more visible if I change the light settings a little bit and possibly come a little bit closer as well. So we know that Earth has them, obviously, and this is because um, when some of the solar radiation comes to Earth, it interacts with the magnetic field of Earth and creates these beautiful uh, visible lights. But on Jupiter, things are a little bit different. We know that Jupiter can actually create them without any solar interaction. How? Well, we're not entirely sure, but we think that it's somehow related to the volcanic eruptions on the... Um, moon of Jupiter known as Io. So when the volcanic eruptions occur on Io, they essentially create a lot of charged particles. And these charged particles then end up in the polar regions of Jupiter and create uh, the beautiful aurora effect. But the problem is that we have no idea how they make it from all the way here down there. That's a huge mystery and still has not been explained. And so maybe one day we'll be able to answer this question, but for now we'll just have to accept the fact that Jupiter's aurora are very powerful, very beautiful, and are possibly created by Io's eruptions, or possibly by some kind, of a, some kind of a different mechanism that we still don't understand. And the last mystery of, of Jupiter is in regards to its surface, and specifically in regards to the following. If I come really close to Jupiter here, and if I actually look at it, You'll notice that it has these different bands on its surface and all of these bands are colored differently and they have slightly different composition and potentially uh, different things happening inside of them. But what's really interesting and what's unfortunately is not shown here but you can kind of maybe see here is that um, they are actually they're moving at different speeds. All of them have different velocities, all of them have um, different rotation speeds and we don't really know why and what makes them slow down in certain regions of Jupiter and what makes them accelerate in other regions. And they also seem to have different speeds depending on whether it's sunlight or night. So there's a lot of mysteries in regards to these bands, how they're formed and what makes them spin and rotate at these particular velocities. And so that's essentially all I wanted to talk about in this video. And I wanted to mention these seven unusual mysteries that we still cannot explain about Jupiter. 
Even though we've known about this planet for hundreds of years and we've explored it using several probes, we don't know enough about it and there's still quite a lot of mysteries that hopefully one day we'll be able to solve because they will help us understand how other planets work, how our, the life on our Earth was formed, and potentially give us new theories um, about other exoplanets that one day we might be able to colonize and call our new home. And anyway, so thank you for watching, please subscribe, and potentially share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn their video games. Come back here tomorrow to learn something else interesting, fun, or potentially just watch me play a video game. Anyway, space out guys, and as always, bye bye.